Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. Finally, a movie that uses puppets to explore the inner depths of the human psyche. Now, if only someone would get puppets to review movies about puppets. Hmm. Anomalisa is a wholly unique film that is unlike anything you've ever seen before. I can't say I loved it so much as that I was haunted by it. Anomalisa uses a fascinating format, stop motion animation, to tell a very simple story and make a statement about the nature of human relationships. The thing is, the statement that it makes in the end is, is not one that I particularly liked or even agreed with. I can't deny the film's delicate beauty. I can't deny that I was fascinated throughout the entire running time. I just didn't ultimately leave the film satisfied. It unsettled me. It made me uncomfortable, which I suspect was the filmmaker's intention. For that, it earns my respect and my appreciation as a work of art. But I'm not quite sure that it earns a universal recommendation. That's it for the capsule review. Let's get in depth. Anomalisa is the brainchild of twisted comic genius Charlie Kaufman, writer of Being John Malkovich, adaptation and eternal sunshine of the spotless mind. That last film contained in its final scene a beautiful and powerful expression of the true nature of love, or at least the strong pull of new love that can ultimately be undone later in the course of a long-term relationship. Here, Kaufman provides another similar metaphor, but it feels more dour, more cynical, less universal, and it lasts for the majority of the movie. The film begins as a slow jazz riff on the mundanity of life in a low minor key. David Stone, played by David Thewlis, arrives in Cincinnati to give a speech at a conference for customer service professionals. He drifts in a weary sort of fog through bland interactions with a cabbie, the staff in his hotel, and a former flame that lives in town. Really selling the feeling of monotony is the rather bold choice of casting. All of these characters, indeed all of the characters in the movie save for David and one other, are played by the same actor, Tom Noonan. And he's not doing different voices, I mean it's the same voice. Men, women, children, even the actors on television when David sees a bit of my man Godfrey in his room. Same voice. This drab universe is our setting. Our protagonist is a bored, average looking, not very well in shape man in a nothing city with nothing to do, unexcited by anything, and just used to everyone in the world. His wife, his ex-girlfriend, his son, his hotel bellman, everyone sounding exactly the same. That all lasts until he hears one person's voice, Lisa, played with grace by Jennifer Jason Lee. He hears her voice and he just wants to be around her, specifically to listen to her talk all night long. And this is the metaphor for love, or at least for infatuation. If you are infatuated with someone, you focus solely on them and they completely stand out to you from the rest of the world. They become an anomaly. I think you're extraordinary. Why? I don't know yet. It's just obvious to me that you are. And taken as just a simple metaphor before the film's story takes off in various weird directions, that's kind of beautiful. Then David's journey takes him to some strange and unsettling places, which I won't spoil here. I can't spoil here. Even at the expense of not being able to explain my complicated feelings about this film, I won't spoil where the story goes. In the end, it became clear to me that everyone doesn't sound the same to everyone else in this world, just to David. That this metaphor really describes only David, not even Lisa. She seems to hear the world as it really is, with everyone having unique voices. But it's David's perception that is off, and the film really becomes a glimpse into the psyche of this sort of jaded narcissist who may or may not be going off his nutter. David, upon examination, is a highly unlikable person, and the revelations near the end seem to only apply to him, this man whose ability to follow his own advice, and when we get to his actual speech at the conference, it is quite a statement indeed. Look for what is special about each individual. Focus on that. 
is causing him to be unable to connect and may lead him to ruin. In the final moments, I was just sort of left with a, huh, uh, all right, kind of feeling. I walked out of that theater ready to pronounce that the emperor had no clothes, that all the critics were wrong, and that I was gonna be the one to tell it like it is. And then I thought about this film the entire long drive home. I don't deny that the movie's haunting quality resonates long after the hypnotic spell cast by this film, which renders the mundane in beautiful animated form, is truly potent. The surreal nature in some of the shots and scene transitions speaks to an awe-inspiring amount of painstaking craftsmanship, and the story definitely unspools in some very surprising ways. There is a graphic sex scene. Hooray for puppet sex! Look. If there's one thing you know I can be in favor of, it's puppet sex. But it plays very straightforward, unlike, say, Team America, which was played for laughs at the sheer absurdity of it. When characters have sex in this movie, it feels more realistic than most sex scenes involving flesh and blood actors. It's tender and mature and surprising. And in the middle of it, there's that unsettling feeling that David is only interested in Lisa because of one quality that makes her different, which in some ways is no better than only talking to somebody because they've got money or they've got great boobs. The people involved may not notice themselves, but to outside observers, we can see right through it. Which is why I stated at the beginning, and I keep stating, that this is a metaphor for love or for infatuation. Is David's love genuine? Is it some sort of trick, some flaw in human design? Or is it just the manifestation of the neuroses of this one character, David Stone? I don't really know what the movie wants me to think. I'm giving Anomalisa a large bag of popcorn for the cinematic craft and the brilliantly illustrated ideas. The story, the protagonist, and the overall message of the film just didn't quite gel for me, and judging by the Rotten Tomatoes score, I am still in the minority there. But there's no disputing the film's originality and craftsmanship. This is a weird, weird little film. I can say I enjoyed it. I can't say I fully understood or agreed with it, and I can't predict whether you will like it. But I certainly won't forget it anytime soon. That does it for Movies That Pop. Don't forget, you can follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter, at Movies That Pop. Due to trademark laws, I am unable to give any film a thumbs up. Rest in peace, Siskel and Ebert. But you can give me one by clicking below. Also, take just a moment to click the icon right down there and subscribe. You'll find us easier next time. You'll stay updated on the release of upcoming videos, and it helps us out. So please, subscribe. You know you want to. In the meantime, I'm the Colonel. Thanks for watching Movies That Pop, and that does it for 2015. Bye!